Hello, welcome to Ian HRP on YouTube and welcome to today's video, which is all about a photo book and uh, why it's a good idea to actually print your photos. Welcome along then to today's video, just a quick-ish quickish video. Um, we are going to be talking about this in particular. This is a photo book from a company called Sal Digital, S-A-A-L Digital. I'll link them down below in the description. Um, full disclosure, they did give a £100 voucher off the cost of this book in order to, uh, so I could do a full review. Um, it did cost me um, £25 in total because uh, of the pages, etc. Um, but yeah, so they gave me £100 off. Um, and I just really wanted to talk about actually printing photos. If you're a photographer, which I am, um, we have thousands. I've got over 100,000 photos on my Lightroom catalogue. Um, and what do we do with most of them? Bin most of them, because most of them aren't worth um, editing and done. But the ones we do edit and the ones we like to keep, um, they just tend to sit on the computer. We'll post them onto social media, onto Facebook, onto all the um, picture uploading sites, etc. But then what else do we do with them? They just sit there and you forget about them. No one else sees them. Um, so perhaps we should be looking at printing more of our photos. Um, if you just see behind me, these are two recent photos that I've uh, printed. I'll show you a closer look of them. Um, I had them done. Uh, I got a, a Groupon. If you're in the UK, you'll know what Groupon is. I got a Groupon deal. Um, and I think I got both of those on canvas A2 for about 12 quid. It's not a lot at all, and they just look nice in the background as well with my um, LED fancy lighting. It's not fancy, it was cheap off eBay. Anyway, let's get on. Let's have a look at this book here, and I'll give you my thoughts on this um, professional photo book from Sal Digital. So then let's have a look at the photo book uh, first of all. Um, this is an acrylic front, and it's leather bound, as you can see there. It's very nicely leather bound, actually. Um, it's a really nicely put together book uh, with no barcode. You have to pay no extra for the branding, etc. Now, these are aimed mainly at people that do um, wedding photography, christening photography, that sort of stuff where people want a book um, to commemorate the wedding photo album, etc. Um, so in total, uh, if you were to buy this book without uh, any discount it would be 125 pound and 58 pence including shipping the print in itself was 75 pound uh, and the cover with the acrylic leather uh, surface no back uh, leather back and no barcode was an extra 45 pound um, so they are not cheap products to buy um, yourself um, but if you're doing a wedding business uh, photography business that does weddings people will quite often want a book and this is very nicely done. One thing I will say is that there is some scratches as you can see on the acrylic, um, which is slightly disappointing. Um, it's probably about the, the, the most disappointing part of the book actually is the front cover. Um, it's the first time I've had an acrylic photo done and I actually do like it. Um, you can just about see that. Uh, this is of Martor. Sunrise, which is a, a beautiful place if you ever want to go and, go and visit there. Um, so yeah, that is the slight disappointment. There's some scratches actually on the, the cover itself, which is uh, slightly annoying, but let's actually look at the book itself. Uh, bear with me, there we go. Right, I'll just quickly go through the photos that we've got in here. Um, so again, this is a handheld panorama of Martor um, taken at the sunrise, and I had it printed on art paper which I think was about an extra £15 or something added to the cost. You can get them on glossy or matte, but I just wanted to see what it would be like on art paper. And it's very nicely printed. And what I do like is the fact that on the crease of the page, there is no... So each sheet is a single page, um, so you don't get much of a, a mark or stuff down there. So you can put full landscape photos on um, and you get the whole coverage. So the first page is the introduction. Um, and again, on black, this looks really nice. I actually really like the way the print is very, very sharp. Um, and then we go to the first section, which is people. And as you can see, uh, it's very, very thick paper and very nice indeed. Um, this is a portrait um, of a lady that I did a photo session with. Um, this is actually a natural light portrait taken with the Olympus 
uh, 45mm 1.8 not the pro version the normal version really really nice lens but as you can see um, I intentionally had this photo because it's very dark on here I just wanted the face to be on this side um, and then this is actually not a high court judge it was taken at a event that I did a photography of uh, for the Marchington Singers and they were doing some Gilbert and Sullivan um, and this was one of the characters he was a, a judge um, and I just I really like this photo it's never done any good anywhere <laughs> people don't seem to like it but personally I really like this photo I just think it, it works really nice um, next page we go and again we've got some portraits this is the people section of the book um, and I'm I quite like this it's a very personal thing um, a lot of people don't like this very close half face image but I do quite a lot of them whenever I get a chance. It's a, a little thing that I do. Um, this is uh, the gorgeous Danny. Um, we did a photo session with, um, and I really like the print of this. The colors have come out absolutely beautifully. Um, and on the art paper, it really works very nice indeed. Again, this is some more um, of the Marchington Singers. Um, people say that the Olympus a micro four thirds doesn't do low light very well. This was very low light in places. Uh, if you do the settings right, you can get some decent pictures out of it. Um, and again, this was a um, an actress who was just getting ready. I was asked to do some backstage photography um, and I just like the, the mirror shot on there. One of my favorite portrait photos I've taken in the last year easily. And this was a very, very quick grab and go um, it was actually at Donington in the pit walk um, which is a motor racing circuit in the UK if people don't know um, and I just really like this photo I, I like the the isolation of it it was taken with the 40 to 150 pro lens um, probably at about 150 uh, it may have had the extension tube on there as well but again it just prints out really nice the quality of the print if I just zoom in as you can see, the quality on the print is, is exceptional. Um, if you just have a very close look there, you can see the writing on his um, sunglasses really well. Um, it's very, very well printed, as you would expect from a professional line of photo books. Right, let's move on. Sorry. Um, zoom out slightly, there we go. So this was um, two um, girls who were doing cosplay and we did a photo shoot of them. I've added that bit in there. Um, I think this is from Heather's and I got the quote wrong, but it just sort of works on the photo there. Um, and that is a, uh, I really like that. The lighting was added after um, at the background. So it wasn't the actual, she wasn't holding that position for ages and we did it live. It was done after in post-production. Um, and she is from Harry Potter. I don't know what character. Um, we'll just quickly show you these. I say some of them work better than others. This one is is a little bit too dark towards the bottom here. The feet are just going out, but if we sort of did that, it would be fine and nice. Um, and then just some quick black and white ones. Um, I like this one here just because of the spiral on there as well. But I think this is what helps when you have a book printed and you have your photos printed. You actually get a chance to properly look at them. Um, and this one in particular is panoramic landscape this is at um jacob's bank no it's not it's at fadley junction there we are um, and this was a very nice sun sunrise um, with mist on the canal as well um, handheld panoramas on the olympus very easy to do and work really nicely um, this is yes the name of this completely forgets me uh, <laughs> i'll have to search for it i'll put it on screen and tell you where it is um, but this was taken with the 7.5 mil fisheye lens um, but again, really, really nice print and the art paper just gives a nice bit of texture to it. Um, and this again as well with the 75, uh, 7.5 mil fisheye lens. Um, I can't remember what the name of it. It's a mine of some sort, an old mine. I've completely forgotten. I'll flash it on screen. Anyway, um, this was actually not a panorama. This is a, just a, a wide shot that I've zoomed in. Um, but again, really, really nice detail. And I do like the fact that you don't get a seam down. Well, you do get a seam, but you don't get a really noticeable um, seam down the middle. A bit like the new flip phones, I would imagine. You can see it and touch it and feel it, but it doesn't really distract from using it. Um, and again, these are all just landscapes. We'll go through. Um, 
The colour on this one is slightly off from if I look at it on the computer. Um, the blues are a little bit too blue on here. Um, so you do have to be careful with your image choice. So there's some in here that are not printed as well as I would have thought, but that could be my file more than anything. Um, and again, uh, this photo I really like. I was um, at a battlement on an old National History, National History, Natural Trust building, um, and this pigeon was just sat in there. So I just managed to grab that one in there. Um, the moon, probably one of the best shots I've taken of the moon actually, very, very nice and clear. Um, and again, on the art paper, it just really pops very nice. This is one photo and this is more, this is my fault rather than the actual printing. Um, it's just completely black down there. I've lost all the detail in there, so I, I, perhaps not the best one, but yeah, you know, we live and learn. Um, and again, just quickly looking at these, this again is at Fradley Junction. It was a very, very beautiful morning um, with some absolutely stunning light. Um, this has been brought to boost the colours, etc. Um, it wasn't quite as spectacular as that, but the colours are there in the first place in order to be able to boost them. Now, my motorsport. Um, this was a, a rider, he walked away. All the riders walked away, if anyone asks. Um, but again, that just works really well as an introductory page on that book, I feel. Um, this is one of the ones that I got printed at the back on canvas. Um, and on this, it works better than on the canvas, if I'm honest. Um, I really like this photo. Probably one of my favourite motorsport photos I think I've ever taken. Just lucky to get uh, five of them in a row like that. And then this one, probably the best looking photo in the book from the print wise. Uh, this was the British GT Championship Decider weekend, uh, and this was a guy that won the championship. Um, but the colours, when you look at it in person, really do pop. Um, but it just looks really nice. I'll just zoom in on there. And um, as you can tell, the, the quality and the level of detail you are getting from these from the print on here is really really nice um, and for me it's working nice with the art paper rather than the gloss um, for most of these photos and again a nice double page spread of Donington and these are some of my most sport ones um, again just some of the background shots uh, I've moved more from going all on on track action on track action to walking around the pits and the paddock area um, and just getting these candid shots of the riders getting ready and things like that the helmet just waiting for the riders to pick up that's the winner again and then this one cheeky um, this was for a cancer charity race that they did at the no limits racing on the last event at Donington um, and they were doing they were, it was an all women race and it was raising money for um, cancer charities and he decided to flash his tattooed bum. So there you go. Um, and there we are, just some more of the bike action. Oh, bear with me. Uh, British GT, um, GT3. Um, and again, these work really well. The colors are very vibrant and really, really nice. Um, I particularly like this photo. Um, I'm not sure if some people would, but I, I like the fact the car's going away from you. You've just got the marshals in the side there. Uh, a bit of a crash shot. Literally, there was somebody stood right there, so I've had to blur them out slightly and do that. Um, this was the one and only time I have ever been on the start-finish straight. Um, this was a club event, and they allowed people to... Uh, it was a free... You could literally just walk on to the start-finish straight for the main race. Never know in a series do it, and it was a really good opportunity, because unless you've got the press passes, you never get this close. Um, so I just wanted to get some of these through the netting driver shots, um, and it's not as easy as you think because there's lots of people around and you have to sort of bustle your way through. Um, but I just like this one. He's always taking an energy supplement before he starts a race. Um, this was at um, Tunafest at Donington on a very, very hot August Bank holiday. And they had these drifting taxis um, and you could actually get to the fencing. And I literally stuck my 7.5 mil wide angle fisheye lens through there the railings and caught these as they were going around but again that works as a nice double page spread um this was british gt again you may recognize him he was from strictly and also the british gt championship winner um 
who's again names completely forgotten me but he's from emmerdale calvin fletcher there we go that's who that was i didn't realize he was an actual racer as well um i really like this panning shot it's one of my favorite ones i've done um just snagged it snagged it caught it even um i can guarantee you this one there's probably about 50 other ones that are just not quite right it's just that one that you need and then this is the iron man um, which comes through the village where i live um, so i go out and take photos of these um, and it's the only time i ever really sell photos because people buy them and this is you talk to rugby club um, i try to get a bit of different things so this is them on their half time huddle um, and you can see I, I like that photo it's done quite well for me that one uh, in some competitions um, and then again just some action and sport um, that one uh, just caught it and just managed to catch him literally look at his face it's like oh that's gonna hurt in the morning uh, and then onto my macro lastly these are all stacked images so this particular image is of a, uh, a moth not a live moth it was one that was found in the conservatory one summer's day um, but this is done with stacking photography um, it's about a hundred and odd photos in here um, which you then stack together to get this but you sometimes get some artifacts down the corner um, if ever you do macro photography um, you'll be amazed especially when you do really close-up macro photography the amount of hairs on insects they're very very strange looking creatures when you um, look at them very very closely um, and again this was just some uh, butterflies that were taken at a butterfly farm butterfly house i think if i remember correctly very nice parrot or parakeet and then some nature photography at the back as well and then a good old robin slightly dark on that one and then some macro of flowers and that is all of the books uh, 64 pages worth for 125 pound now that is a lot of money for this book you can get photo books a lot cheaper but this is probably one of the best quality photo books that i have seen um, and i'm really really impressed the printing of it is good the, the the quality and the binding is very good the leather case is very nice as well these are particularly aimed at people that do wedding photography um, um event photography things like christenings where people want to buy a book they are aimed at the professional market for you to then put this together and sell on as part of your package for wedding photography um, so would i pay 125 pound for a showcase of my photographs no I, I wouldn't normally but would you offer this to your clients if they were looking for a particularly nice book then yes um, the print quality is very good as i said the acrylic front is is disappointing with the scratches on there um, but the actual quality of the print itself the paper is very very nice it's a very thick um, almost card feeling quality paper um, and the actual print quality is exceptionally good uh, as I've shown you it's very very well detailed there is no blurring etc and no loss of detail that you sometimes get on things like canvas prints um, really nice I will provide a link below I'm not getting any commission or anything I'll provide a link below to these particular books it's their professional line of photographic books but i would recommend sal digital this is about the third item i've had from them i've had a big panorama print as well um which uh, is is up on the wall um and that looks really nice it's a very very nice print you do get what you pay for some of the cheaper printers um some of the quality of the items is not as good this is a really nice book and um, i'm really happy with it and i would recommend it if you've got the money but also if you're looking to do it for your wedding photography business, I would heart heartily recommend this particular brand. Right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had, enjoyed looking at some of my photos. Um, I will link to, below to Sal Digital and also to my websites, etc. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do subscribe. I post when I can. It's not very, very regular, but I do post as much as I can. Um, so if you have liked it, why not give us a subscribe, click on the like button. And until next time, this has been Ian HRP on YouTube and bye for now.